Welcome back. We'll be looking at complex numbers and the equations that they form and how we can solve certain ones when they have uh, when they're raised to a power like like this one here. So let's let's first let's see what we have. We have uh, z to the power of 3 equals 8i, okay? And then we're asked to give the result in the a plus bi form. So we'll we'll find the roots that make this true and then we'll plot them on a graph. Okay, kind of straightforward. So we have 8i and we're going to turn z cubed equals 8i. We'll turn z into the polar form. So what we need to figure out first then is, well, where is 8i? Okay, and if you look on on an axis here, you'll you'll see that 8i is a place that it's it's up there somewhere and it is only on the imaginary line. So when we're converting this, that's something we need to consider when we're going into our polar form. It's a place, there's a, it's a certain distance from the origin, and it has a certain um, argument or angle if you wanted to think in degrees. Okay, We will be using radians, uh, and that's important because we're going to be using the unit circle and we want to get some exact numbers from this particular one. And it, it makes more sense in, in this form anyway to use radians because we like to go back and forth in different forms and eventually we'll be taking derivatives of these things and then it gets rather complicated with degrees. We'll just, we'll stick to the radians. All right, let's take a look at the unit circle just so we can get oriented here. Uh, if the y-axis was our imaginary, then you can see already pi over 2 is this sweep from the circle, okay? And that's where the 8i was. Now, when we have that, let's just go and try to use uh, de Moivre and his formula so that we can uh, solve this. Uh, I'm not going to show you the derivation of de Moivre, but uh, that's another film. It takes about 15-20 minutes just to show that. This is how do you use it once you know how to use it. Okay. So in our, our polar form we have we have this and then we can convert it using de Moivre over to this. Now notice here that says 3v. So 3v is going to be this. So oh for example if you had let's use degrees because it's easier. If you had 20 degrees uh, then you would divide it by 3. If you had 90 degrees, you'd divide it by 3, whatever it was. Now it's radians, and we'll, we'll just divide by 3. So we're going to be looking at that, and we're going to rearrange some things. We need to first look at this here, okay? R cubed, now that's going to be the distance from the origin, and it's going to be 8. So already you can see it's going to be 2, because 2 times 2 times 2 is 8. All right. And if 3 times whatever angle is, is going to be equal to the pi over 2, then obviously a single v would be a third of that. Now you may remember from trigonometry when we're using the unit circle and we want to go around and find all solutions to a particular kind of trigonometric function, we'll use something like this. And that's because when you go around the circle one time, okay, the n part, that would be 0. So the first time you do it, you don't count anything. Every time after that, every trip around the block, you're going to add something to n. So n can be 0, first trip, then 1, 2, and so on. Right? We'll be doing the same thing. Let's take a look at this then. We have our r is equal to 2. We have v is equal to a third of that. And n is 0 the first time, so it's only pi over 6. And we'll continue that. We have to do it a, a couple more times. But let's go ahead and, and take a look at the unit circle and see where pi over 6 is. And get into the habit of doing this. You need to. Okay. There's pi over 6. And here are the values for sine and cosine at pi over 6. Okay. And those are then going to be incorporated into this right here. Okay. So the first solution for when n equals 0 gives us this. And I can imagine there's some protest, but think that everything is multiplied by 2 first. Let's look back real quick. All right. 
you see how this is radical 3 over 2 and this is a half right there? What happens when you multiply those by 2? That's why you get this right here. All right. So if this 2 were not here, you would take it directly from the unit circle. But we have to multiply each term by 2 first. All right. Let's take a look at the next one when n increases again. And we're going to be looking at the unit circle. And first, there was that's where we were. We're going to end up over here now. OK, now let's, let's look at that. OK, now n is 1. And I, I made the claim that it was going to be 5 pi over 6. And that's because pi over 6 plus 1 times this gives you that. All right. Let's look back real quick again. See, there it is. And it's still multiplied by 2. So we're going to take these numbers, our sine and cosine. We're going to multiply it by 2. And of course, you'll see that that'll take, take off those 2's there. All right. And then we'll use those in our little formula here. OK. So then we get these coordinates, or that particular complex number. Sometimes it's easier just to think of it as coordinates. You got your real position and your imaginary position. All right, let's do it again. Now we'll have n equals 2. And we'll do the same procedure again. Okay, And when n is 2, of course, you just go right back over here. You start off with pi over 6. Then you have 2 right there times this. That gives you 3 halves pi. So let's uh, look at the unit circle and go to 3 halves pi. Okay, And you can see that is right down here. Alrighty, right at, right at the bottom. Having pen troubles. There we go. Okay, 3 halves pi. And this is really nice. When 0 comes up, it, it tends to make things easier. <laughs> Unless you're dividing. We don't like to do that. But otherwise, 0 can be really nice. So let's, let's take a look at our solution here. All right. The 3 pi over 2 gave us this. You go straight down the imaginary line and get to negative 2i. Okay, So our positions are going to be radical 3i, negative radical 3i, and negative 2i. Now, let's put those on the coordinate system, because it, it asked for us to, to draw this. So let's put them out. Here we go. So we have, we have a number there, a number there, and a number there. That in and of itself is interesting, but it gets more fun. Because these solutions always end up being really nice geometric figures. If you have three solutions, you'll get a triangle. Four solutions, a square. Five solutions, a pentagon, and so on. And they can always be circumscribed with a circle. So you get <laughs> these really neat shapes uh, that are solutions to some what otherwise would be rather cumbersome problems. This one happens to be not that bad. You could probably do it without uh, de Moivre, but we wanted to show how to use the formula anyway. And then the more complex ones, it gets to be a real difficult proposition to solve it in, a, in another way. Not that it can't be done. It's just sometimes it's really nice to have these powerful tools. All right. Hope that helps. See you next time.